Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentary's Magic Stream on today, Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. I'm, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese, our cat, and... Ivory Starlight. Ready for some turkey in a few days. Yeah, no, I'm working all next week. Sorry. That's what um, Swanson's Frozen Dinners are for. Ew. This stream I have, is sponsored I have... by Swanson Frozen Dinners. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I have standards. Thank you. Fine. Marie Calendar's Frozen Dinners, then. Better? All right, look, I, I already have the potatoes. Can't even do Hello Fresh. No. I already had the potatoes. I have turkey. I had turkey. I'm going to trust, trust Hello Fresh to send you a full turkey. Oh, ugh, no. Not a full turkey, but like... A breast or something? Yeah. Okay, maybe. Maybe. A, but a unit, if, unit if the, turkey? Sure, but if they don't send you, like, the nine side dishes, then does it even really count? No. No, it doesn't. It's true. It's all about the side dishes. Poll in chat right now. Thanksgiving dinner. Main dish? Side dishes. I mean, I don't even like turkey, so... You can have a different main dish. No, you can't. Uh, let's see. Thanksgiving is Thursday? Thanksgiving is Thursday. All right, let All right. me think about that. Okay, so for me that means lunch is going to be a frozen <laughs> thing of um, chicken tikka masala. All right, that's, that's fine. See, there you go. Very sounding chicken. That's all, that's all good. I mean, we're having, I mean, we're having tri tip. I mean, I got a friend who's pescatarian, so baked salmon's pretty good too. Whatever. Whatever. You're, you're not going to hear me complain about that. Brown sugar crust or something? No. Dill and lime. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about this, about week? this week? Food! I'm hungry, apparently. <laughs> Actually, we're talking about I side effects. And I apologize for the background noise, but my headset recently broke. Aw. Rip. Yeah. Rip indeed. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we are talking about Ciderfest because this event was held just a few weeks ago and it was our first look at what the new core and new Harmony meta might look like early on, thanks to the release of New Dawn. I wanted to make a Huxley joke here, but I think I'll let that pass. Fair enough. All right, so let's uh, take a look at... Let's start with core. Okay, sure. All right, so let's see. Uh, in first place, although not undefeated, we had no undefeateds in this tournament, is Jacob S. with um, minimum safe distance orange. Why are you calling it minimum safe distance? Because there isn't one. It's Pinky. Yeah, but as much as Pinky loves throwing random cards at opposing friends to dismiss them, that is not the primary goal of this deck. Not by a long shot, as evidenced by the fact that it doesn't even run a rack of belly flops. No, that, yeah, is, that is true. But really, if you've got Pinky, the belly flops are just gravy. I mean, it's true. Alright, so what are, we, what are we looking at here? We're looking at Party Cannoneer Orange. There's also a handful of blue in here, and a handful of purple, and a little white. This is You're a, not playing any of those cards. No. This is living to laugh, pure and simple. So the goal here is to get all of the cards out of the draw deck. Exactly. Which is exactly why you have these other cards in there. Because Spitfire, when she hits your discard pile from anywhere, draws you a card for free. Hey, that's pretty good. It's deck thinning, of course. Golden Parachute provides protection for your friends from your discard pile for free. Hey, that's pretty good. You know, and since you discarded it anyway, why not? Same day delivery can be discarded with Pinky Sense to gain AT and put cards back into your deck, which is pretty good. That's actually quite good, considering that 
Living to Laugh needs you to draw the final card. So it's helpful to have a way to make sure that there's a final card. Yep. And just in case your opponent has gotten rid of all your pinky senses because they're a jerk and know exactly what you're doing, you've got three rush makeovers and two motivational speeches, so you can still end up hitting that purple wreck. Best tech. Yeah, it's uh, no Selena Blue. It's there are indeed back. no Selena Blues. Well, it's in the wrong color. What are you on about? It's fine. Look at the rest of this, though. It's just like... Yeah, but you have Featherbangs, who accomplishes a lot of card digging. And also token generation to help you reach your mandatory 15 unity. Which is challenging, but not impossible. I'm not sure of it. Having all those random Earth Pony tokens sure helps out. Oh, it does. Especially by the time AJ and Pinkie Pie end up hitting the field. And then you win the face-off because you use one of your two belly flops on that. And then... Oh, guess I'll just draw 12 cards now. Yeah. All right. Also, we're neglecting the problem deck a little bit here, so let's back up a bit and look at that. And I think this is maybe not going to be representative of the the new combo problem deck, but it's probably pretty close. All right, so what do we got here? We've got Buzzer Keep Away, which that's got a 9 for your opponent. That's pretty annoying. Yeah. Uh, prospecting interruption. It just says they don't score a point. I mean, cool. That's pretty good. Too many Fluttershies. That's also a 9 for your opponent. Ew. This sounds Seek annoying. Seeking the Scepter is an 8, and your opponent can't use their main character to help confront that? That could potentially be annoying, depending on the main. A single Buckball... And uh, two mysteries. Yeah, now, the, yeah. thing, the thing that's kind of interesting about that buckball is it actually only ends up enabling really one card that you'd like to play early, which would be surprise party notes. Well, sure, but that's also thinning to help you get uh, pinky flipped. Yes, it is. But every other card in here has either one wreck or three wreck. So it's one of those questions of, is the buckball worth it over playing, say, a royal breakfast? And just gambling on the fact that you may have a surprise party notes. And I think the answer is maybe, because you do still need to get pinky flipped eventually, and so the one extra card that you dig through your deck is probably worth less than getting your hand smaller. Well, yes, because that means that you're drawing an extra card and pinky doesn't like that. Not early. As soon as she's flipped, yeah, draw all you want. Yeah, so I think the buckball is probably the objective correct start here. The one counter argument I could maybe hear to this is uh, party science, I think it is. Party science. Oh, when you play a pink friend, yeah, yeah, pay one less to a minimum of one. Yeah, it's possible that that might be better, maybe, but I I think the buckball is probably correct here. Probably so, because I don't think Party Science is going to get you enough value off of your early Berry Punch or Silver Stream, since you'll still have to pay the one. Yeah. Unlikely. Anyway, problem deck aside, um, this is very likely to be one of the most refined living to laugh lists in core. There are other options. You can run a different main like Skystar, which can give you an early boost and, an, and a much easier flip. You can run Apple Delivery over Golden Parachute to protect all your friends instead of just one. Uh, but overall, playing against this, I really liked the way that it worked. And I think that uh, I think Jacob is onto something really good here. Yeah, so we'll have to see if someone can put a little bit more optimization into this. I don't really want to call it an engine, but does it need more optimization? This is about as close as I think it's going to get. If well, there are well, minor tweaks, they're going to be meta-reflective, not necessarily reflective of cards that don't do a great job in this list. Well, sure, but you can you can sit here and point at this and say that, yes, this works, and this is probably a, at minimum, a glow, 
like it's probably a local maxima there might be another more different list that might be able to perform better but as you're saying here i think yeah there's probably some fairly deep meta considerations yeah expect to see variants of this floating around for a bit what do you think cheese i think it wins <laughs> it like... certainly it certainly did well so it's your new deck is that it uh Oh, no. we, that, we can't that's going that to be the next deck, though, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, we got to let him talk about the next one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else with uh, Josh's deck here? Solid. How could you mess up the name? Five of seven. The same day deliveries are really clutch. If you're building a living to laugh deck, I would really consider including at least two of those. I'm curious if there's ever a point when you don't just take rushed makeover with mystery at Hope Hollow. It's gonna be real hard. That's a really good card. Um. Yes, but they're degenerate cases where you're like I've already taken them or I've already drawn them and I just need another card out of my deck. Well, yeah, if you if you get all three rush makeovers in your opening hand, whatever, grab a fire of friendship or something, but yeah, but like they they're not going to be real common. No. No, give me that berry punch. You know what? You might need the unity. Don't laugh at that. It might happen. Yeah. I mean, that's an extra three power for one token, probably. It's uncommon, because if you're at the point where you start caring about unity 15, you've probably drawn most of your deck. Yeah. But, you know. That would be the ultimate feels bad play if you have to grab berry punch. I mean, it's a mystery. Eh, whatever makes you win. Yeah. Like, it's still a win if you're at one, at uh, if your opponent's at fourteen points. It's true. Those are the best wins. Didn't I get a win like that? I'm sure yeah, I'm pretty sure that we have one of those on one of the weekly gameplay things at some point. I think I've conceded at fourteen before when my opponent was at zero. Feels real bad. Uh, it does have Big Mac. There's your resource removal. Yep. Only has two, but... Uh, Fairy asks what Unity is. Unity checks the total power um, in a particular color among all characters that you have. And if you have at least that much power among characters with that color, then you get whatever the Unity effect is. All right, let's take a look at the next deck. Okay, so this has an actual name. Be right, bake. I think. Correct. But I don't yeah, like I don't. that name because I think this should actually be called. I can't believe it's not burb. <laughs> but it is burb. It's mostly burb. Look, we this can't... does look a lot like the OG burb. We can't have portal. Okay, that's just not allowed anymore. It has five cost friends. I guess the original world cost friends. Yeah, I had a couple of four cost friends, and it was four. fine paying with those. Yeah, because they uh, they made a bang when they landed. All right, so I I'm not sure that this deck really needs a bunch of introduction here. It's Tempest Pink. There's a little bit of white sprinkled in. For it's Tempest it's, Pink. It's Tempest Pink. I'm so confused. Why are you confused? There's no... Whatever the heck they're called. Uh, Sacred Deliveries. Ah, so... Uh, this is actually a, a relic of the fact that I don't believe Bugle's List actually converted properly. Nope, this, I believe, is a proper conversion. No, because he's supposed to have rushed makeovers in here. 
Uh, interesting. What is the? That's probably what the spider surprises are supposed to be. Supposed to be that. This, this is the link. This is the deck that is linked. So. Oh, I know. No, this is this is what he played. He suffered from a, a conversion issue when he was oh, actually going during to the yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, so the spider surprises are actually supposed to be rush makeovers. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, spider surprise kind of still surprise works makes here. Makes a lot of sense with sunset festival ish. I, I wouldn't have thought. I wouldn't have thought much of it. Well, but the it's, the, the spider it's surprises. Is, uh, not going to be as good as Tempest and Grubber into Sunset Festival, although I'm I really enjoy that he's running those like for serious. That's such an annoying card. I love it. It's pretty good. I mean, Burb used to run a single copy as the forty sixth card. Well, yours you did. couldn't decide what to draw. No, you ran a single copy as the forty sixth card because Cheese is a madman. The thing that I'm like balking at a little bit here is that this isn't running a rack of mimics nor no. is it running grubber yeah i'm like I, this is a, a pretty interesting version of this deck yeah there's definitely some some medicals going on here um but overall it's pretty apparent what's happening you've got not only the powerful enters play effects off of things like tempest shadow and grubber or queen chrysalis or bait and switch or professor of laughter or postal mare but you've also got the mrs cake and amusement factory and bodyguard so if you start with a high cost friend you can just chain your way down to powerful enters play effects and every time a friend leaves play you're making unicorn tokens so, who needs Paper Twilight when you have, like, five prepared tokens? I mean, at some point, your opponent's just going to be like, well, I guess we're not having face-offs. Congratulations! You've just you lost, have the game. lost the game. Yeah, you have accomplished everything you wanted to. Yeah, let's see here. And otherwise, yeah, it's a lot of the usual suspects here. It is worth noting that a deck like this might be able to get away with less color entry because Mrs. Cake is able to find your bodyguards automatically. So, that's interesting. Maybe? I mean, you still need to get into pink, though. And, and yeah, you gotta get into pink. poor pink. Yeah, you do. But this deck has a rather ugly trick to deal with that, doesn't it? Sure does. Starts with Royal Breakfast, so you get your extra card draw, which is nice. Flip Tempest, turn one, grab your Grogar, put it face up, banish the Grogar immediately to find your Changeling Distraction, put it face down. Turn two, uncover Changeling Distraction, get your Pink Wreck. Now you're basically on an eight Confront Requirement Trading Traditions with three Pink Wreck and a flipped main. Time to play Selena. I hate it. I want to play more Selena. I mean, you can also play Sunset Festival, so that's pretty good. Or Pinky's Present. Or Amusement Factory. I would recommend against playing Amusement Factory turn two. Nah, that'd I'd, be fine. Don't worry about I'm it. I'm going to go with the Selena. That definitely sounds like the best one. Disgusting. Yep. Anything that gets Selena into play on turn two or three is disgusting. Smithers makes a comment here, at some point the opponent will spend three turns saving action tokens to disable both bodyguards and then play Sanctuary Scuffle for all friends with printed power two or less. I think he might be speaking from experience here. The large-sized oof. Remember when we had turn two double paper twice, Selena? Yes! I remember. Those were great. No, I don't no, want I don't. to remember. Repressed memories. Those were bad. Also, I don't think those ever actually happened. I did it a few times. Uh, no, you didn't. All right. I'm pretty confident. Oh, turn he did. three. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. All right. What do we got going on in the problem deck here? You got a flip. A lot of new cards here, actually. Buzzer keep away. Say hello to my little friend. Cool mirrors. Cool mirrors. Yeah. Very solid. Lowest confront requirement for your opponent is, well, maybe four. Realistically, seven. Yeah, 
Yeah, because of um, little friend there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. I still can't believe it's not Burb. Bugle says I, he's done a turn one double Selena. Um, all right, she's here's your challenge. Get all three of them into play by turn two. Disgusting. Oh, get all three into play by turn two isn't bad. You just have to go into harmony, which is what Bugle's referencing, and that's cheating. <laughs> I mean, if we're in harmony, then what's it matter? I'm going to like lift off with one pace from turn one, one on the draw. Yeah. yeah. Sure, why not? I mean, magical happy Christmas time, right? All right. Yeah, Nothing right. good ever happens. Tis the season. Next deck? Next deck. I can't believe it's not growing confidence. It's not. It's stunning wonder. I believe he means stunning confidence. That's fine. I, I love that wonder. this doesn't actually look that different from the growing confidence version. I mean, well, it's not. Well, it does look different. Because it's not sitting there 4 0 undefeated. Also, I have uh, I've played myself by calling Angel horsing around Fluttershy multiple times, only to be corrected by my opponent. To get wrecked. Yes. Terrible. Was indeed wrecked. Okay, so this didn't change a whole lot, but there are some interesting cards to talk about here. Um, Rainbow Dash Fierce Loyalty is something is a card and with the exception of mono blue i think you will be hard pressed to find another deck that can meet blue unity 15 as easily as this can and perhaps even in spite of this i might go far enough to say that this deck running a secondary color and a main that isn't blue can meet unity 15 blue easier than mono blue can with all those anthems, absolutely. Well, yes, I mean, just a Flutter, Rainbow and Fluttershy, and then Cloud Chaser and Fred, just the two of them alone, just so much power here. Yeah. So Fierce Ooh, Loyalty, we'll power. obviously then, very powerful. Um, good things to find include wash, uh, Washout's performance. Hey, take your free 2AT reduction. Uh, bad things to find include stuck together. Don't do it. It's a trap. I don't... <sighs> Why would you do that? It says when you play this card. Because people don't read cards in this game. Because people I don't, don't read anything in this game. I just, I just do things and hope I'm doing it right. I also don't read cards, but even I know that you can see the glorious taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Hashtag not sponsored. Fair enough. I have a box of cinnamon toast crunch on top of I my saw car. you were trying to go someplace with that, and and you almost got there. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of bad, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, like stuck together. I think doesn't, especially after messing around with it recently. I'm not real fond of the card in a offensive sense. But oh. uh, no, the card itself is amazing. I'm just saying, don't get trapped into putting it into play you know, instead of actually playing it. Right. Unless no, you really want a five power dilemma and your corralling critters aren't available. Well, so uh, the the problem I have with it is you really, really, really need to be able to do something big with those two tokens that you're left over after it. Yes. So growing uh growing confidence or stun wonder or whatever her name is. is the main that's going to be most able to take advantage of this because she effectively sits there and says, if that's the dilemma that you're dropping into play, cool, you get three tokens, not two. And that's... Stack, stack your triggers properly. Yeah. Don't, don't be sad and stack your triggers wrong. Yeah. And that is that is such a huge game changer because it, it gives is. you so much more you can do. It is and it's not. Um, there are a number of two-cost cards in this deck that, provided you are able to play one of them after Stuck Together comes down, it's enough for you to be confronting that problem. Uh, key among these is Rocket Scooter and Loyal Pony. If you have a single 
Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy chillax anywhere, Rocket Scooter is going to give you six power by itself. Right. But you need a deck that is properly constructed to do this. And the, the deck that I was messing around with didn't have a whole lot of cheap enough friends that could really do that. And, and you know, you, you got to be a little careful. Gotcha. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that definitely does make sense. You need to be sure that you've got a play lined up, because otherwise, if you're just playing this as an anti-combo card, which you can to a point, but... With Still living, denying AT from somebody. Right. Yes, you yes. can. But Living to Laugh is going to be one of the premier combo decks that's out there in core right now, and it's not really a deck that's dependent on AT. It's a deck that's dependent on cards. Yeah. Right. And like even then, that's only going to stall the combo for a turn or two, depending. Right, because your opponent's going to go back and get three, four AT the next turn, another up to six. Right. So, so I guess it's more of a cautionary tale of don't think that that is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Sure. I do like running four copies of Meadowbrook. The two royal cheering voices are actually quite nice in this deck. Silly things you can do include exhausting a CC and Flitter, playing a friend for the uh, reduction, playing Royal Cheering Voice to bounce your CC and Flitter to play them to the problem where you just played the friend to give it an anthem, and then exhaust them again to play another friend for one less. It's free movement! And double dipping on play reduction, which is nice. Uh, do we even need to talk about final question in the problem deck? Probably no. not. Okay. Do it's, we need to talk about bring out your best? So many points. It has a two bonus on it. I think that's all people need to know. It has a two bonus and it asks you to pick a tribe. I have two Earth Ponies. I'm naming Earth Pony. I will let you do that and not take it back. I'm naming Siren. Good luck. I'm naming Aoi Zodal. Tree. All right, that's enough about this. Next one. All right. Uh, let's see. Actually, it's worth noting that all four of these decks are three one zero. Yep. Yeah. So our final core list is uh, Cursed Chords, with there's a spell for that, and a touch of orange. This deck. This deck is great! This deck does things. This is an aggro deck, even though it doesn't look like an aggro deck. There's no Moon Dancer, though. How can yeah. you have an aggro deck without Moon Dancer? It's it an aggro deck. generates much more power than Moon Dancer ever could. <laughs> yeah, I know it does. There's, there's some shenanigans going on here. Luster Dot is so good. Buster Dawn is a very good card. Um, Celestia Restricted Section had been kind of fun in limited environments in the last meta. And it saw a little bit of splash play in a few decks. But it takes so long for it to actually get online and get you a lot of power for the 2 AT and the 4 Wreck. Unless you play Legacy Leech and gain, like, 3 AT and also draw a bunch of cards, and then all of a sudden your restricted sections are like 10 power. Which means that if you've got any rock hoofs out, they're going to go up to 16. And by the way, have I mentioned the... What, let's see here. Three... A full... Cripes. A full 12 card suite of disruption here? Ew. Yeah, you're purple. Of course you're going to run Disruption. And you also, you're orange, so you can run Heat Wave. It's great. Well, I'm going to point out that Spice every single surprise. one of those Disruption cards is a New Dawn card. It's Heat Wave. It's Levitation Meditation. It's Spider Surprise. It's Sudden Closure. Just, yes. I mean, also Staff, but whatever. What, that, that's, that's old news. Forget about that thing. Yeah, yeah, everyone just get rid of your Staffs. No one cares about it anymore. I was talking with Cursed after the game about this, and he even acknowledged that although the deck started by looking at in the zone and being like, yeah, I'm going to play events and put it on my main and get a nice big main, that's really not required. 
You just generate enough power by itself that in the zone is not the cornerstone of the deck, but it still does good things. And there's probably a lot of room for experimentation with Spell for that in a number of other colors, but there is a very particular reason that this deck is running orange, and it might not be what you think. It's running orange because Sudden Closure is one of the few cards that can hit Mimics before Mimics modifier comes online and shuts off your entire event suite. I mean, Sudden Closure is just, like, really annoying in general. It's a good it's a, card. It's a very good card. Uh, there's potentially an argument for swapping the fires of friendship with um, motivational speeches, since you don't really have a discard method here, and your or your most important orange cards are going to be at three rec. Uh, what other than oh, I guess there's two that are at three rec. Your yeah, Southern yes. Closures and the one Rock Hoof uh, from New Dawn. The Bulwark. Right. Yeah. But the I Southern mean, Closure I mean, is I... really important to hit. Yeah, like, the Southern Closure is the entire reason you do that, because everything else is, you can hit it off of Fire of Friendship. Right. So, yeah. That seems like there should be some adjustments going on there. I'm sure we'll see versions of this deck, both orange and other colors, that will pop up, because um, anything that can make use of Legacy Leash and Restricted Section is and Luster Dawn, like, there you go. There's your purple aggro right yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be relatively event-heavy, though, because look, look at how many events are in this deck. Oh, it will be. It definitely would be. Yeah. So. Also, we're not going to mention the blue horse with the purple wizard hat. It's a changeling. What? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that card, are... you don't need that card. It's a ling. It's a ling. It is also a changeling. It gets big. It's the bad kind of changeling. You, you got big friends. It's good. It's fine. It's great. All right. Well, that's 3-1 in core. Yep. Top four. What did we see? One. We saw pink orange. Then we saw purple pink white. Then we yeah, saw yellow blue. 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 And then we saw purple orange. So we hit all six. Amazing. Oh, the white was. It... You've yeah, got yeah. Bodyguard and Chrissy. It hit the requisite five cards. It's white. Yeah, but there was no uh, Miss Me. You don't need this man. It's not a white deck if it doesn't have this man in it. Okay. Well, well, we'll see about that. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of white coming up here soon when we get to our rampant speculation section. I wonder if we're going to see all four colors in the harmony. Uh, all four, wow. All six colors in the <laughs> harmony list. All right. Ivory, would you care to tell us which two colors don't exist in harmony? Um... Purple doesn't exist, and pink doesn't exist. Okay, well, I think our first deck is going to keep you accurate for now. All right, so on to Harmony? Yes. Guess uh, what? what? Go ahead. No? All right, what? What's, what's How here? long until we get to a premiere card? Uh, uh, Werefrog. Uh, no, you cannot, because that is a start of turn trigger. Triggers are faster than immediates. You do not have a priority window in which to play an event prior to that trigger getting processed. Yep. Okay. Right. Premier right. block or premier set, cheese? Set. Ooh. Uh, next, next deck. Not this yeah, one, yeah. but the one after. Yeah. Sec yeah, second deck. Okay, well, uh, let's see here. So into Harmony, and let's talk about our undefeated. Balloon is back, baby. Did she ever leave? No. Fell out of favor, maybe, but I don't think she ever left. Either way, this deck is really good. Anyway, Best Princess is going to cruise onto the scene and start messing some stuff up. The way she always does. By dropping Mono blue friends. Luna. Going really fast. Causing face-offs, scoring points, getting big bonuses. 
Does this deck even use anything from Premier Block? <laughs> it has Sea Breeze's Flower. Uh, yeah. Resource and I think that's mobile. it. Yeah, that's it. Everything else is from EO or newer. I'm surprised the problem deck doesn't have anything from Premier Block, but... Well, remember, Premier Block was all color, not color. Uh, right. uh, yeah, up until... Minus one color, but minus CG. one problem. Yeah, up yeah, until it, Show Must it, Go On, and that was the only one. Can't really yeah. use any of those cards. I'm a little surprised that this is starting with Totally Lost, rather than one of the other things that effectively turns into a 5-7. Uh, it starts with um, it starts with the new blue starting problem. Yeah, it's running oh, Tarnished oh. Reputation. What's it doing? What's it doing with the totally lost? Then you, I don't like it. It's just a it's a five seven. I mean, it's just another problem that's easy to confront. You got yeah. better things you can run than that. Lock and like tree. What? Lock and tree affects your opponent as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. You can make an argument that the totally lost should have been mystery. Okay, I don't that, think that I, don't I think, think there's. Think... Yeah. Yeah. No, you, I don't think you can argue that one there because gotta go get that extra loyal pony. Yeah. Or the stick. Or the stick. Or the, or or the, the sea breeze's flower. Yeah. No. That, yeah, that's that, that... yeah. Or the grandpa gruff. Or professor of loyalty. I mean, you got a number of things you can hit. Smithers yeah. said in chat that the totally lost was meant to be another moving out, but he forgot to switch it out. That would oh, make sense. Oh, womp. Yeah. No, that's that said, we got nine hasty friends here, plus some free movement off of Daring Do, plus a bunch of dilemmas, and Grogar's Lair making its first appearance. Ah. Yeah, this is another deck where I think Stuck Together can really make a splash, because there's a ton of stuff you can play and have Bluna automatically moving over there, sure. Yeah. Any two-cost hasty friend and stuck together becomes an instant DFO if you're confronting the other problem. Is so, it great? Yes, it's amazing. As you demonstrated so plainly on the last recorded gameplay video. Stuck together is so good. Disgusting. Yeah, I honestly, I'm not sure that there's really a lot to talk about here. This is pretty well laid out and obvious how this is going to run and how it's just going to go really, really fast. Kind of did. Kind you're of either going to win before this, or you're not going to win. Wow, that's that's some deep commentary there. Yeah, but if you say it confidently, then I, no one suspects a thing. Wow. I was going to say. Uh, this was our first undefeated deck between both events, though. And in fact, the only undefeated deck between both events, so congratulations, Smithers. Blue fast went too fast. All right. Uh, Cheese wanted some premiere cards. All right. Yeah. Where's my premier card? And you're gonna be super shocked which premier card it is. Arceo. I, I still can't believe it's not Burb. This, this is nothing burb. like Burb. You keep calling Dex that. That's not This has like one card that Burb also ran, and that's oh no, two cards, because Paper Twy was legal at that point. Uh, let's see. What, what, is, what, is, what is the actual name? Spontaneous goof off. So I'm pretty sure that Spontaneous Song and... Wait, is it actually supposed to be running Spontaneous Song and Dance? Yes. yes. It's actually that is supposed very... to be Spontaneous Song and Dance. That is a very relevant card to this deck's goal. Oh, uh, is... multi off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a combo deck. This is making use of Starlight, Glimmer, and Sunburst, playing Spontaneous oh, Song and Dance first, right, and then... Okay. Yeah, you got it now. And there's your premiere card, Shocked. No, oh, the... Gyro, sure. I mean, what were you expecting? He said RTO, and he was I'm wrong. Right. That's I'm, in the next I'm, deck. Don't well, worry I'm about it. I'm sitting here looking here at Gyro and just being like, didn't we ban him already? No. No. What has Gyro ever done wrong? Every yes. Found, yes. found events to enable nonsense like this. Okay, you know what? Werefrog, no. It's not, it's not Jiro. It's Euro. 
does it taste good? Euros are delicious. Fight me. You want to know what's also delicious? This uh, combo. Yeah, a four card combo this is pretty good. Four card combo using a showdown event. A mass showdown at that. Yep. Hey, it's the same one that uh. French one Express? shot. Yeah. Or, uh, not no, French not one Express. shot. What was the uh, name Dragon of that Express. stupid deck? Dragon Express used this one, I think. So did... What was the one that... Scrucia? One Step. No, it was One, one Step used oh, yeah. to goof off as well. Yeah. We just can't have nice things. We can't. I think the one comment that Bugle ended up making uh, after the game was that the Starlight Glimmer enforced equality was determined to not be needed. Uh, one Purpose was a very different deck prison. One Purpose used a bunch of showdowns. But they were all single showdowns. Look, Vapor, Vapor Trail is a nice pony. She just... She's in, the bad, she's in the bad girl corner forever. She's not allowed to go within 500 yards of uh, Twilight Sparkle Faithful Student. Correct. Who, cough, turns out, might not even work. Cough. Cough. Oops. Oops. Not our fault. Hashtag not our fault. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty straightforward. You're gonna be, you're gonna gain a bunch of AT and draw a ton of cards with multi goof off and all your friends involved having studious and studious stacking thanks to sunburst. And then if you draw a gyro or another multi goof off, you can do it again. And you're gonna dig through your deck really quickly. I'm just gonna keep that up until. You empty your deck, then you drop the living laugh into play, and you've probably got like a billion pink power at this point. Oh, yeah. And, and then I just casually tip the same day delivery on top of your deck and just be like, GG. It's going to be real silly. Uh, I think the only way I can think of getting through a deck any faster would be uh, using the mob mat combo and throwing in a Grogar's Bell and banishing your entire deck. Yeah, that'll do it. I may have toyed around with that idea a bit. It's gone nowhere yet. Rip. Yes. Just, just got to figure out the way it wins. Yeah, with no cards. No, it's yeah, fine. It's... You don't need a wing con in your combo deck. Yeah, you're right. You don't. Yeah, why would you include a wing con? I mean, right. you can you can go the other way and just do just strong way. arm your opponent into conceding once they once you reveal that it's a combo deck. No, you just use the the pie eating contest route. You don't have to pack a win con if you pack a lose con for your opponent. That's a fair point. Also, speaking of combos, this is the traditional combo problem deck as we would expect. All right, enough of this madness. Next deck. Next deck. But you don't want to. Next in depth, step. dissect the combo problem deck we've seen for three metas in a row. No, no, dude, this combo deck dates. Wait, no, problem deck dates the... back forever. Yeah, like the, the hey, problem deck has RTO. an actual change. There's right, your RTO. Right. You found, happy now? Found, found yes. the lady. I win. <laughs> I mean, no, you don't, but it's okay. There's the other lady in here too. Try to win. Who, Octavia? No, nah, day shift, yo. Oh yeah, she's still legal in Harmony, isn't she? For some Whoa. reason. Well, no, it's because we've got nonsense like the previous deck. You're gonna need those day shifts to keep up. Why not right. day shift and RTO? Well, well, that's a question that this deck asks. Disgusting. Also, Octavia with Breezies. Glorious. Yep. But... Fluttershy Breezy with no Critter Choir and Octavia Yellow makes me sad. You'll be fine. I know. Um, Leo's justification for running some of the cards in this deck were he was very much expecting Chrysalis. Everywhere. And so he's got both Rarity and Fluttershy Breezies as well as uh, Battlesnakes and Cotton Sky, and Delivery Mare, and it took me until this exact moment to realize that Battlesnakes was a pun on Rattlesnakes. 
Congratulations. Wait, really? Really. Amazing. It's also a fun um, programming game, but I digress. Fair enough. Nerd. Ew, where? I think Leo's other thing here was he just wanted to include as many cards as possible that would let him score bonus points, and that's why the cappers are here. Ah, good old capper there. But yeah, no, found the lady. Uh, and otherwise, this is kind of typical I, of an Octavian uh, Aggro deck. deck. Yeah, I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. We don't really see many Octavia decks uh, hitting the tournaments these days. We don't, and the cards that they run are usually much more uh, selected. In this terms does of definitely standard. seem very tailored to anti chrysalis. Yeah, there's definitely some meta calls going on here, and um, a bit of Leo's trademark madness involved for sure. Yeah, but you can see there's a bunch of good stuff in here though. Like the delivery mares means you're always going to have something at a problem. So oh, yeah, so, same with the day shifts. Yeah, very yeah. good. You just you don't ever want to have have to play something and not get you know something off the plus two there. Is that the, a Fluttershy breezy? That yeah, is a yeah, Fluttershy it breezy. It the costs pet, zero. The pet primping in the problem deck is interesting. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, if he was running Kratos, I would, I would definitely get that, but. I'm not think, sure what's going on with was, that. I think he was trying to do this with Opalescence, and he mentioned trying to use Opalescence to banish an opposing friend, then use the Fluttershy Breezy to bounce the Opalescence to put the opposing friend back into play at a problem with one of his characters to boost them again. That's a little spicy. So that's that's kind of clever. Yeah. All right, how about one more? But yeah, there's definitely, I think, something that's going to be done here, because there's some firepower here. I'd be interested to see his version that's not tailored to fight against Chrysalis. Uh, Same. All right, uh, let's see. Um, our fourth place uh, Harmony deck is... Well... That's a main that I haven't seen in a while. There's a lot of alicorns here. Joking Luna likes his alicorns. There are, in fact, a lot of alicorns How many here. alicorns? Let's count. Well, all of them except for a certain Pegasus. Alicorn, alicorn, alicorn. Ha! Not Brad alicorn. is an honorary alicorn. Alicorn, 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 alicorn. Yep, checks out. Lots of alicorns. Oh yeah, and even got the um, Nightmare Moon New Moons. That's a yeah. card I haven't seen in a while. I saw that and I was like, wait, is it, is it that card? Yeah, when that card came out, it was like, okay, there, there's like no alicorns. Then the tricorns started coming out and it was like, oh, I'm never challenging this card again. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Beat the new moon. Get ready to have Princess Luna in play instead. When Princess Luna is scarier than Nightmare Moon. Yes. yes. I didn't, I yeah, didn't she even scares, think about that. She scares the other friends. That Royal Canterlot voice is certainly something. RCB. There's no RCB in this deck. No, it's Luna just screaming at ponies. She does that. I'm talking about the thing that she does, not the card. Right. Got some suns and moons for flipping. And we got the new Twilight in here as well. Bewitched beavers. Ah, uh, yeah. Big Twy. Yep. Bewitched beavers for stick abuse. Very good. Very good. Gotta have that. Got some singing barrels for your color entry. And that's it. Wow. That's spicy. 
That's it? That does appear to be it. Well, I mean, that's nine. I mean, but you got the new moons there. Like, yes, you can DFO them away, but still, you want to build it up. You're never going to, though. No, but that's fine. That still controls the opponent. Like, sure. Okay, Go ahead. Don't I, touch don't... that problem. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's not it. I messed up. I forgot. The main is yellow, not purple. You've got six purple entry that are also Alicorn friends. Okay. This makes more sense. Yeah, I was yeah. very confused for a moment. And then you can get Brad, and then you can get even more Alicorns. I have the confuse. Where Frog asks, why does Nightmare Moon reveal the friend that gets put into play? Uh, it's a templating thing from Magic that when you're searching for a card with certain conditions, you have to reveal it to prove that you are meeting the conditions of it. The one exception to this was uh, Grogar. Because the consequence of not meeting those conditions is you lose the game on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a lot of alicorns here. What? Like, like all with alicorns. Are you talking about like putting a non troublemaker face down with Grogar into play? Yep. Yes. Yep. That. Yeah. Don't do that. As soon as that's uncovered, that loses you the game if it's not a troublemaker. So, don't do that. Party for Moon Dancer, easy as cake. Like it, it seems like Joking Luna is going for, generally speaking, larger confront requirements. But there's also some low ones splashed in here. You got the set of Distractedly Dactrus, because that's an irritating card. No, it seems like a reasonably solid suite of trouble uh problems here like the the one thing i'm mildly surprised is uh entrance exam isn't in here yeah that is a little surprising you're often not going to be using your main yeah let's yeah. let's take a moment here but your main's already sideways when she's boosted <laughs> ha ha all right Th Thank you for Thank that you. one. Oh, that was that was pretty good. Oh yeah, and then this is just like global plus one power for all your named alicorns here. Except for Babby Flurry Heart. Who's not in here? Is she? No, she's, she's not. not. She's not. She did not exist when this card came out, I think. Uh, said Princess Twilight Sparkle on it before one of those existed, and everyone was just like, rah, rah. Twilight was better before she had wings. Get out! Ancient <laughs> memes. Uh, other thoughts here? Nah, I'm good. Alright. So, we, so now, now it's time... Ones? Now it's time for the fun part. This is the, the rampant speculation part. Who wants to go first? Okay, so... Living to Laugh is a good card. I that don't know if I'd call that rampant speculation. That's not rampant speculation. Rampant speculation... That's a lukewarm take is me sitting here going, all right, so you know what we didn't see? A lot of Chrysalis. You know what showed up all over the place in the rest of the results? Chrysalis. You mean not in the top four? Yeah. There was one Chrysalis in Core and two in Harmony, I think. Uh huh. Which was half the rest of the Harmony field. Chrissy was too busy putting on her eye makeup. No buggy move. Lost my contact. Did you just say no buggy? Yep. Yes, that's the image. It's amazing. I agree with you, though. 
Uh, Chrysalis is a main that is difficult to work with, but oh my lord, some of the things you can end up doing with that. And we're not even talking just in core. Now, if you if she gets online, you're going to be hurting. Like the the suite of stuff that she can do for taxing is just it, it's several different levels of not okay. There's I think you'll probably see more chrysalis being really mean in harmony than also, you will in core. I think yeah. that's true because some of the best taxing stuff is only available in core. Like stacks of suitcases are just ouch. You mean only available in harmony? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stack of suitcases is obviously great. Standstill can be very irritating for your opponent as yet another free disruption event, which will just make them scream. Yeah, like, which yeah, is, like if Wink wasn't infuriating enough. Hi, yes. Put that back where it came from. Additionally, there's a really tech discussion we've been having over the last few days on uh, Chrysalis in Harmony including a copy of A Second Chance as her starting problem. And if you go second, you're just going to have a bad time. Right. Because the problem with Chrysalis is if your opponent's able to get their stuff online before she ends up getting flipped, then some of her value ends up lost early, and the early game is definitely her weakest point. So if you are in a position where your opponent can keep playing stuff to flip Chrysalis back over when players are only gaining 3 AT a turn, then that means you're just trying to play catch-up and maintain the status quo. You're not advancing your tax position. So going first is fine because your opponent only gets a single turn before you can flip. Going second is much worse because then your opponent gets two turns before that happens. Unless... Unless you get that extra AT. Turn and then flip, and your opponent better have played their friend on turn one, or it's going to be cancelled, or double-costed, and then you just drop a stack of suitcases turn two, and you laugh. <laughs> Dude, stack of suitcases. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that card. I mean, you might if you play Harmony again. Correct. Harmony is kind of a cesspit, and it always has been. This... Honestly, these results don't indicate that as much as no, they really previous don't, metas have. But I mean, we have an aggro dude, deck going yeah. four zero. But, but it is Mono also very blue. early on in the meta, and traditionally, aggro is best right after a meta rotation. Yep. Mm, true. So we are going to have to see here, because I fully expect that Control is going to stomp onto the scene and make an absolute mess. At the beginning, I agree. I think the early to mid meta game here is going to be very Control heavy. Um, this is in spite of the fact that there are colors outside of Control that got enormous power boosts like Orange. And Prism Light actually asks an interesting question here. How do you play Orange against Chrysalis? Cry. Um... That depends on the type of orange deck that you're playing. It also depends on whether or not you have a heat wave, because that is the correct answer. I have a I feel heat like, wave and can play it. I feel like orange blue with Grogar as the the new Grogar as the main would probably do fine. Mm, you'd think so. And if you can establish a board position early and not run into troublemaker, troublemaker walls, it's great. The problem is, orange and blue have very few ways around troublemaker walls that are cheap. And white has a lot of removal for big friends between dramatic apology and it's going to work. Never so mind right, if you, you know, swing into pink a little bit. Sure. So if your board ends up cleared and you're suddenly facing a wall that you can't break through, uh, it's very bad for you. I was basically locked out when I was at six points or so, and about a few turns later just had to concede. It's rough. Uh, that being said, I still expect Orange is going to do decently, and I think there's a few varieties of it. I think that uh, Applejack Work Hard Play Hard hasn't been seen nearly enough, and that may just be because people don't like running farm slash control, and that's what she's going to do very well. 
I am kind of surprised we didn't see a single grow cord list across either tournament. Yeah, people wanted to try other stuff. Give it, give it a little bit of time. Uh, we did see a, I think only one player trying to run a cozy deck. Uh huh. Cozy is difficult, yeah. and it's it's probably not going to be very fortunate here. But it it looks like cozy is not going to end up working out too well. well I mean, see. but the strategy is is fine. I don't know if it'll necessarily be tier one. Yeah, no, it'll work. It's just maybe not going to be, yeah, like tier one. Was that, yeah, that was in core. Now, so granted, it does pack a very large amount of very infuriating things to play against. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, Cheese, the question I would have for you is, what form of control do you think is going to be most dominant early here as the meta continues to develop in core yes in core um i think it depends on how well the frighten control works out um but like purple pink white is has always been a pretty strong control deck i think that we'll see a lot of that early i do think there's some other options like, I do think that there's a white primary thing that we could do now. Um, like, with Wink and with um, a few other cards we got. Okay. Right, and I think there's a couple... But we haven't really were, seen that yet. ...who are running that kind of deck here. Let me go look. Joking Luna was running a... Uh, whatever this is called, white. Yellow, that's the color. But this isn't really control, this is just changelings. Yeah. Joking Luna has a couple favorite decks he enjoys running. Uh, one of them being changelings and the other one being alicorns. What was Crow running? I'm a little interested this in is... his... the uh, changeling deck here. I'm very surprised that this isn't running a Celis. He may have just wanted to try the new main. It, it, it's, it's entirely possible. That's yeah, true. Crow's running a Solace, but this is still this is not control. Speaking You're of... not running Ocellus with control, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking that of cool annoying. stuff. Speaking of cool stuff that Crow has tried recently, um, there was some some conversation on the Stormguards Troublemaker from Sequestria being used with the new Princess Luna and instantly removing all eight counters to make four two-power figment tokens. It's kind of spicy. It's pretty good. You can find it with Tempest, or you can find it with Grogar, and it's, it's just a huge power swing. And then you can dismiss your Troublemaker, or bring it back, and yeah, there's some, there's some cool stuff going on there. Uh, I do think that there is more yellow that exists out there than just Stunning Wonder. I think Nurturing Nature is still very powerful. And I... also a certain um, Neon Bambi. Yeah. Do we want to talk about Neon Bambi briefly? Well, you, you sounds like you've got some thoughts on your mind here. What you got? I think that there's a few ways you can build Neon Bambi, and I think that both decks are going to be somewhat um, dependent on the local slash national meta to fill out their last few slots. I think Thorax Orange is still very powerful, um, but while Troublemakers are prevalent early on, I would expect him to include some copies of Applejack and Applebloom. And we've been messing around with a Thorax Pink list using Pound and Pumpkin Cake and Lyra and Bon Bon. Who I Thorax am. Thorax Pink. Thorax Pink, indeed. And I am going to go out here on a limb and call Lyra and Bon Bon from New Dawn as my sleeper card of the set. This thing is nuts. For one ET, you are able to put an opponent's changeling mimics in one of the worst places it can be outside of like the banish zone or the bottom of their deck 
And in doing so, you also get complete hand knowledge for everything that they have. It also can't be taxed by Mimics. That's right. That's really rare to find. It's just an all around excellent answer. And yellow pink's got a bunch of other annoying stuff too. I don't know. There's some fun stuff going on. Uh, I also think that we will see more decks using uh, Mrs. Cake. I think 99% of them are going to come from Google, and that's okay. Uh, I also think they're going to lean much heavier on the aggro side than the, uh, the control side, but I'll leave it to him to go over the specifics of those whenever he feels like he wants to. I'm, I'm Everyone, just... experiment with Mrs. Cake. Prove GP wrong. I'm just going to ask that if you make a Mrs. Cake deck that you name it after a dessert or some kind of baked good. All of them have to be named after desserts. Yeah, Magic had its uh, had its breakfast phase. Now we need our dessert phase. Right. Okay. So so ho hold on. We've got let's let's back up a moment here. We've got hot wings, right? We've got like regular hot wings. Blazing. Like, like, yeah. Right, so we've got different flavors of hot wings. So I think we need to have cheesecake, and then we just come up with different like toppings. Oh right. no, Jeez, cheesecake! That's, your name. that's cheesecake your name. is the, the one name. that cheese has to make. That's it. That has to be it. <laughs> Congratulations, cheese. We've named your deck. All yeah, right, cheese. Cheese, go perfect. build a go build a Mrs. Cake deck. Time to get Kay. to work. So we're yeah. gonna have like strawberry cheesecake. Cherry cheesecake. Lemon cheesecake. Manhattan cheesecake. It's gonna be good. Anyway. We've we've totally gone off the deep end here. Yeah. Not completely. I actually think that we're still gonna see a lot more aggro uh being in the top spots. I think that control will get more prevalent, yes, but I'd still think aggro is in a really good place. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more control. The Some of the tools that Orange and Purple in particular have gotten, um, they're going to sting. They're going to sting hard. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I think that ultimately what we're going to see is Control uh, trying to hold off the aggro decks and combo trying to outrace and out non interact the aggro decks. Yeah, and I think they're going to have a little bit of a time with that. There's, I think, a lot of opportunity for mid range or tempo decks in purple and possibly orange now just because of all that interaction. Oh yeah, that's true. Either way, I'm excited to see what comes up. I'd still like to see what someone ends up doing with the T-Rex main. Yeah, that's kind of surprising that we haven't seen any of that. I guess everyone's still maybe gun-shy of trying to do Fright and Control. Jeez, you seem to speak pretty highly of it just a few minutes ago. You think it's still got a shot? Uh, maybe. I think that's the other option. Yeah, like that's, and th th it's understandable why people might be gun shy about this because I think since <sighs> probably as old as like Ten or Lot Nights, yeah, because there was um, Rainbow Dash Goosebump uh, Giver, I yeah, think. and everyone was kind of looking at that, just being like, hmm. And... I think it was the it was the Nightmare Moon, the Blue Nightmare Moon main in Absolute Discord that people really went all in on the Fright and Control, and they found it not as effective as they wanted it to be. Well, the problem is that main is just bad. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to pull a punch here. That main's just It's bad. an absolute Discord main. Now, hold, hold, hold up. Former yeah, was fine. Yeah. Yeah, also, okay. Chrysalis was fine. She was okay. She was fine. She did fine. She was okay. That's better than can be said about a lot of mains in the premier block. I, you know, I can't argue that. I really can't, 
actually. Uh, if it doesn't show up, that means you've got an ad blocker or something running. Yeah. Well, I, guess I guess we'll it... have to see what comes up. Guess so. For now, though, I think that will about wrap up this discussion on the topic for today. Uh, we would like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your regular support. If you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy what we do, please do consider donating. Doing so enables us to continue making content like this and lets you earn some great perks as a bonus. If you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, feel free to reach out to us through Facebook, Twitter, or email. And if you're a patron, you can also chat live with us on Slack any day, any time, probably about Animaniacs for the next two weeks. That's my fault. I apologize for nothing. Yeah, GP's been on an Animaniacs kick. Can you blame me? Not entirely. Only a little bit. Fair. Finally, if you're looking to watch any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them on our YouTube channel linked just below the stream. With all that said, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary as Magic. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big teeth. And? Hot Wings lives. Irish Starlight. Hot Wings Truth. does, in fact, live. One of Lewis and Hot Wings. No, but Hot Wings still lives. It's K. Don't worry about it. It's K. Don't worry about it. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Don't See? go shopping on Black Friday. Shop online. Yeah, it's but, but support your local stores online. Yeah. We will see you in about two weeks, I think. Yeah, that's about right. All right. Normal schedule. Yay. One of those, and at some point in December, look forward to a Yule log. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go start a log down in my fireplace myself. Also, I believe two weeks is the uh, Sim Reviews Meticulous Talks uh, slog fest, correct? Wait, seriously? No! Did you open the <laughs> flu on your... on your... I did. I did, not <laughs> I did not smoke myself out of my living room. This time. This time? <laughs> this time. All right. All right. Night, everyone. Night. Night.